Hello and welcome. My name is Vaishnavi and I'm a product manager on the NCS 5500 and 5700 team here at Cisco. Today, I'm very excited to announce the latest introduction to our portfolio, the NCS 57C1 system. Now, before I go into the details of the NCS 57C1 system, let me give you a little bit of background and history on our product family. We launched the NCS 5500 product family back in 2016. And ever since its launch then, it's been deployed in a wide variety of use cases across various parts of the network and has been a very successful product family. We started our journey with the dense 110 25 gig systems and later evolved to the dense 100 gig systems. Then in 2019, we launched the second generation of our product family, which is the NCS 5700 systems. Within the NCS 5000 systems, we launched the NCS 57B1 and the NCS 57C3. Both of these are part of our fixed portfolio, and we have videos outlining the features and details about these platforms, so do check them out. Now, going to the 57C1 system, this is an evolution of our dense 110 25 gig systems, and these include the NCS 5501 and some of our NCS 55A1 systems. This particular product has a total throughput capacity of 4.0 terabit. It's built on a Broadcom Qumran 2C ASIC that only has a capacity of 2.4 terabit, so slightly oversubscribed. Now, taking a look at the front faceplate, it has 48 ports of SFP and six ports of QSF PDD. Out of the 48 ports of SFP, 32 of them are capable of doing 1, 10, 25 gig, and 16 of them are capable of doing 1, 10, 25, and 50 gig. So this is our first system to introduce the 50 gig capability natively on the chassis itself. Of the six ports of QSF PDD, four of them can operate in 400 gig mode and two of them can operate in four by 100 gig mode. In addition to this, we also offer MaxX support, timing support, and ZRZR plus capabilities. Now let's switch gears and talk about some of the use cases. The 57C1 is great for pre-aggregation and aggregation use cases, but it's also capable of VDU pooling, top of rack use cases, SYN and PON aggregation, among many others, just to name a few. So if NCS 57C1 seems like the right fit for you, contact your Cisco sales associate or your nearest Cisco certified partner for more details. Now I'll hand it over to our technical marketing engineer to give you some more deep dive information about the product family. Thank you. Thanks, Vaishnavi. Before we jump into the details, a quick introduction about myself. Hey, I'm Deepak. I'm a technical marketing engineer with MIG Cisco. Let's get started. Let's start with the naming convention here. NCS 57C1-48Q6D-S. How to read it? NCS 57 refers to our new family of Jericho 2 base systems, which can run with Jericho 2 or J2C or Q2C A6. And NCS 55 refers to our Jericho, Jericho plus Qumran MX base systems. And the C in here refers to either J2C or Q2C, but in this particular router, it's Q2C. And one for one rack unit, and then the 48Q for 48 SFP ports, and 6D for the 6 QSFP DD ports. And the hyphen S refers to the MAXEC capability on the system. Let's get into more details. The NCS 57C1 is a single rack unit which is approximately 500 mm deep. This is powered by a Qumran 2C ASIC which is 2.4 TBBS capable. But the front facing network interface bandwidth totals up to 4 TBBS so it's slightly oversubscribed. This router supports flexible port combinations from 1 gig to 400 gig. We also support 25 gig and 50 gig natively to address to the 5G XOL requirements. The power requirements to operate this router typically falls around 340 watts and at the max of 488 watts. Uh, this router also comes with inbuilt GNSS receiver and supports Class A timing. We also support MaxEC on this router. The NCS 57C1 comes only in the base variant and it does not have a scale variant with an ETCAM. 
This runs the XR7 operating system like the NCS 57B1. On the security perspective, we support the latest secure boot features with the TAM Trusted Anchor Module FPGAs. With respect to the product naming, the PIT slightly changes based on the purchase licensing model. On the hardware front, this router comes with an integrated RSP, timing sync and the LC complex in a box in a 1RU form factor. When you take the front panel, it comes with 54 network interfacing ports. The first 6 of them, 0 to 5, are QSFP DD ports. The next 16 of them from port 6 to port 21 are SFP 56 ports. And the last 32 from the port 22 to port 53 are the SFP 28 ports. Along with the data ports, we have one console and one management port in the front panel. Now going to the back panel. So along with the timing ports, we have an RJ45 TOD and a USB port. And on the left, we have two power supplies with inbuilt fans, which operates in one plus one redundancy. And in the center, we have five fan units, which operates in N plus one redundancy. Let's discuss more about the forwarding ASIC used in the NCS 57C1. We use the Qumran 2C ASIC in the system. And this is very similar to the Jericho 2C ASIC in the NCS 57C3. The difference between Q2C and J2C is, in Q2C, we do not have the fabric service links for the backplane connectivity, which means this particular ASIC can be used only on a system on chip architecture. And this Qumran 2C ASIC is a single core ASIC, which can do 2.4 TBBS at 1 billion packets per second. This particular ASIC natively supports classy timing as well. With respect to the resources, the Q2C ASIC comes with 16 MB on-chip buffer with 4 GB HBM to handle the congestion scenarios. We also support 128K VO queues on this particular router for high QoS queuing scale. The on-chip resources scale on this particular router is very similar to that of J2, J2C base systems. We also support MDB profile carving on this particular router for dynamic carving of resources based on the profiles configured. We support both the L3 Max and L2 Max profiles and by default, the system operates in L3 Max for more L3 scale. And if we want a higher L2 scale, the L2 Max MDB profile is configurable. Let's look into more details about the network interface blocks. Let's start with the QSFP DD ports, port zero to five. The high power long range ZR ZRP optics can be only inserted in the top row ports 0, 2, and 4, the even ports. The 0, 2, 4 and the port number 5 also supports the 400 gig gray optics, while the ports 1 and 3 can support only the 4 cross 100 gig and 2 cross 100 gig breakouts. While all the QSFP DD ports can support 40 gig and 100 gig interfaces natively. Next, we have the 16 SFP56 ports ranging from port 6 to 21. And they support 50 gig, 25 gig, 10 gig, and 1 gig interfaces natively. And in the last, we have 32 SFP28 ports from the port numbers 22 to port 53. And they support 25 gig, 10 gig, and 1 gig natively. Please note, we don't support breakouts on the SFP56 and the SFP28 ports. And we also didn't support the one gig auto neck during FCS. Now let's zoom into the internal block diagram. We can see a single forwarding NPU, which is a Q2C supporting all the port combinations. On the left, you see three 400 gig ports, which are connected via MACSEC5 to the NPU. And these are the ports, which are zero, two, and four, which are MACSEC capable on this system. And we support MACSEC on 400 gig, 100 gig, and 40 gig NATO speeds, and also in various different breakout modes. None of the other ports or interfaces in the system are MACSEC capable. We also see one of the QSFP DD port directly connected to the NPU, while the next two ports are connected via a gearbox to support the 100 gig breakouts. Next are the 16 SFP56 ports, which are also connected via the gearbox to support the multi-rate speeds of 50 gig, 25 gig, 10 gig, and 1 gig. And the remaining 32 SFP28 ports are connected via a PHY to an NPU, and this PHY operates in the retimer mode to support multi-rate speeds of 25 gig, 10 gig, and 1 gig. 
we will need the controller optics CLI to configure the breakouts on the QSFP DD ports. And rest of the ports auto detect the optics and bring up the interfaces with the appropriate speeds. Since this is a single core NPU, all the interfaces are mapped to the same core of the NPU. You can also notice a 4 GB HPM in the block diagram. This is the external buffer which is used for queuing the packets during congestion scenarios. We also have control paths to the LC complex and on the timing we support PTP and Synky for the Class C performance. With this we have come to the end of the session. For more information on the NCS 57C1 please refer to our xrdocs.io in the below link. Thank you. Thank you.